Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Based on time since you all are coming from. So here we are going to discuss on coding in loops with Java. So first of all, we are going to discuss on how exactly we can work with conditional statements in Java. So here we are going to discuss on loops for while, do while, and if I loop in Java itself. Just a moment. All right. So first of all, to start with, we have the <clears throat> conditional statements in Java. So Java, as we know, has been one of the most popular programming language out there. And in Java, so again, we can do anything we want. And Java has, and again, has been one of the most secure deployments available out there so far. So as a part of conditional statements in Java, we are first of all going to discuss on how the compiler works on to carry out the execution of certain statements in the given program. And here we are going to discuss the type of conditional statements where we are going to have ternary, if, else if, else if, nested if, break, and switch. So to set up this, we have to go ahead and open up any of the IDs. So let's say here we are going to make use of our ID as an in IntelliJ. Now we, there are multiple integrated development environments that like we have in IntelliJ, we have Eclipse, we have Visual Studio as well. So it depends upon which one we are comfortable with. So let's do one thing. Here we can open up a new project. All right, so let's create a new project there. So we can click on new project. We can create a simple Java based project because here we don't need any kind of Maven dependencies. We can name this project as demo. Click on finish. We can open this up a new window. So basically, Java can be worked upon by using a simple set compiler as well. But again, here we can make use of the ID, which is going to take away the process of creating the Java file. And again, you can and again simply deploying and then simply running the same CLI commands again and again. We can simply do away with that. So here we are going to have the same demo setup created here so now to start creating a simple component so here we are going to create a class in this particular java based source project here so here we are going to discuss on how exactly we can work with the conditional statements so here we have for demo so basically here we can go ahead and define the component so let's do one thing. Let's create a simple condition based statement so that we can have a full understanding of how that works. Okay, let's do one thing. Let's check if a given number is negative or not. So what we can do is we can start by creating a simple public class. So here we can check if our condition here, if number is going to be now, or we can do so if the number is going to have the negative value, then we can go ahead and check the value. So for example, if X is less than suppose let's say zero or suppose more than zero if you want we can even in we can say link this up with with the operators as well then we can define which statements to be executed here so basically what we are doing here we are simply go ahead and setting up a new project here so we can create a new project once we do that we can navigate to source and here we can create a new suppose here we can define the demo class as public class demo and whatever we want we can simply include that here now within this we can define a statement here as public static void main and here we can define the components as string argus and the major advantage of any id is that if we are going to make any mistakes and that is also going to be highlighted and here we can define any number for example here we define integer as suppose nine and now if we are going to check so here we can define if x is suppose more than 10 then we can define statement to print so here we define system dot out dot print ln where we can define x is greater than than 10. so we can define it and again and again even if you want we can have two different variables defined for example here we define x9 and y is equal to 19 and here we can define system dot out dot print ln and here we can define x is greater than why and we can check between these two variables as well that we have or that we have defined here x is greater than y and now once we are done with this now if we want we can define other conditions as well that means if this doesn't happen then what should happen then we can define if this is not true 
then print with statement system dot out dot print ln and here we can define that x is or we can define y is greater than y is greater than x so what we are doing here we are simply checking two different conditions to see if they are if they justify a given condition or not if they do then again we are going to get the response and that's how the entire result is even going to be displayed here that's how it works so this is basically a simple conditional statement that we have that we can use to get the output and if you run this up we can see since x is less than 9 less than y that's why here we have got the result as x is less than 19. so now once we are done so now we are going to have again discussion on the multiple switch statements as well so now if we talk about the component of nested if then we can define that next is we have the ternary operators so if you talk about ternary operators then we have multiple loops that we can make use of so there are different loops in java that we can use for making sure we are having a well-defined setup to simply check if a given or we can say how exactly we can work with the loop statements here so for example let's say here we can start by defining a for loop we can start by defining a simple for loop so for loop allows us to ensure that we are able to run a given statement than that to for a given time and if it surpasses that then we are going to get the notifications delivered and processed to us so this is what we define by using the for statement here as a part of for loop so here we can go ahead and set it up so we can do one thing go back now as a part of setting up the for loop let's say here we want to print a given series of numbers and that too concurrently so what we can do is we can define another example so another same public static method now here we can to create a simple for loop so now for using this for loop so here we define for and here we can define for a given integer where whose value is i and here we want to start the value from 10 and then we can define uh, the value of the value here should be less than or equals to 100 uh, the value of given integer should, is less than or equals to 100 then the value of should be incremented by one and then we can go ahead and define another loop within this we can go ahead and define another loop within this so let's do one thing let's keep it to one and then put 10 all together and then we can define for a given integer suppose it can be j so if j here is also start with one here and then we can define for j value then five for j value less than or equals to five the value of j should also be incremented by one and then we can go ahead and define what all should be executed there under this so here we can define system dot out dot print ln and print ln in new line and again within print ln we can define we want to print i and then we want to add a space and then we can define we want to simply print j as well so this is going to ensure that again the loop is going to be executed and that for two times in a given row as part of the statement so you can see first of all it is going to start by one so here we have one 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 two one three one four one five one six then again two again the entire loop for from one to five one to five again the third number third again the entire loop from one to five and so on so this is going to be the entire sequence in which we want the entire loop to be printed here that's how it's structured and that's how it should be so now we are going to discuss on the other loop setup that is go that goes by the name of while loop so here we are going to find how while loop works so while is basically used to iterate a part of the program again and again so the number of iteration is not fixed then we can use the concept of while loops if the number of iterations are not fixed then we can go ahead and use while loop and we can keep on iterating and again within like in the within the while loop as well we can go ahead and make use of other statements so a simple example for while loop is what we can refer back now under the same condition based statement here 
So what we can do is we can define the component. So here we can define the private. Now let's suppose here we want to take input from the user. So here we can use a scanner class. And here, let's do one thing. Let's take it outside the main method as a part of scanner. And even before we can make use of it, let's do one thing. Let's import Java, java.util.com scanner this package has to be imported and here we can create a private static scanner and then under the main method here we can define a number suppose here we have number is equal to zero and the sum is also equal to zero and here we can define a new simply component here as new and then here we can define scanner as system.in so here we are going to take the input from the users and then we can define system.out.println and here we are going to find this suppose as please enter any integer so this is going to be the end uh, the value here and here we want the numbers that we is going to be entered here that we want that to be taken up as a input so here we can define the number and number should be taking the input entered here as a part of this integer and here we can define under the same while statement we are going to take it, suppose if the number is less than or suppose it is more than or equals to let's suppose 10. If the variable number that we are taking as an input if it is less than or more than 10 then here we can define the sum here should be sum plus the number that we have created and then the number should be incremented by one and then we can define system dot out dot print ln and here we are going to find some of the numbers from while loop and then the entire output is going to be printed as a part of sum so once we execute this so you can see this is how this is going to take the input from the end users so here we can ask the users to enter the number for example if they enter suppose five now here we are taking five as an input from the end user so they enter five then again as you can see some of the numbers from while loop is going to be 45 as long as the number value they are simply between the given sum as 10 so 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10 is going to give us 45 so this is going to be the entire set of defined so that is what what we had planned for today everyone so again a big thank you to you all for being a part of this entire session take care bye bye